Hey, you what? Like the scene of like the saying that the scene of Allah is that in his creation, mafala. Is there a difference, Ikhwan, between us saying that we don't say how the names and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal are, uh, and us saying that we do not liken Allah Azza wa Jal to his creation? Is there any difference? Hmm? Again, is there a difference between us saying that we do not say how Allah's names and attributes are and us saying that we do not liken Allah to anything in his creation? Is that the same? Is the statement one and the same, synonymous? Or is there a difference between that statement? Is there two statements? Mm. So you're basically affirming that they're not like his attributes are not like our attributes. There you are. But he has his attributes, and we don't know how they are. But they have perfection in, there in the way they are. Type. So there is a difference. Yeah. There is a difference. Between, anybody differ with that? No doubt. No doubt. So I mean, the question the question is understood in inshallah that. Is there a difference, Ikhwan, between us saying we do not liken Allah to his creation and between us saying we don't say how Allah's names and attributes are? Is that, qu is that clear? Uh, is it clear? It's not clear. Qu again, I'll put the question again. Is there a difference between us saying that, um, salam, that we do not liken Allah Azza wa Jal to anyone within his creation? That's the first statement. The second statement, that we do not say how the names and the attributes of Allah are. Is that the same? Are those two statements the same or are they different? And if they're different, how are they different? Huh. Huh. Mm. Similar to the answer of our brother here, correct. That when we say, Ikhwan, likening the attributes of Allah to the attributes of His creation, that is like saying, Mathalan, that Allah's hand is like my hand. But when we say that we do not say how the names and the attributes are, that could be, for example, that you may come across a book that says that the hand of Allah is. 20 years in length and it is 14 years in width مثلاً. now there is nothing in creation that has a hand that is 20 years in length and 20 and um, 14 years in width nothing in creation but we've still described or attempted to describe the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so even though we haven't likened it to anything in creation we've attempted to describe it in a manner that we do not have anything by way of text in the kitab and in the sunnah four. You see the difference between the two ikhwan. Is that clear? Anybody that's unclear to? Raise your hand. <laughs> Anybody that's not unclear, that, that's cl unclear to raise your hand ikhwan. Yalla, yalla, let's have some participation ikhwan ish bik. No, unclear. If it's clear, that's what we want. We want it to be clear, but we want to know if anybody's unclear about it. Huh? So everybody understand that. Naam. So when we, when we uh, describe then Allah Azza wa Jal, we describe Him as His Messenger Sallallahu described Him, and likewise uh, as Allah Azza wa Jal describes Himself, we don't say how He is, we don't liken Him to His creation, we don't negate His names and His attributes, uh, neither Ikhwan do we interpret his names and his attributes away. So we do not say, for example, that Allah, his descent in the last third of the night is not actually the descent of Allah, but it is the, the power of Allah descending. Or it is the angels of Allah who descend and not actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is metaphorical because if we say that Allah descends, then we liken him to his creation, as some people say. And that is not the case. 
the fact that Allah descends, then we affirm his descent and we say that his descent differs from the descent of anything in creation. We're not able to perceive his descent, but we understand what descending means. And so we affirm that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. What do we mean, ikhwan, by Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah? Hmm. To sing Allah Azza wa Jal out in worship. There's only three people know Tawheed in Ikhwan. You want me to start choosing people? Tayyib. <laughs> sing Allah Azza wa Jal out in worship. Meaning? Tayyib. In regards to our actions. Yani. That any action that we perform that is considered an act of ibadah. That it is performed solely for Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And the Shaykh Rissam Ibn Taymiyyah, Ikhwan, he defines ibadah as ismun jami' li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda min al-aqwali wal af'al al-zahira wal baqtina. That it is the one comprehensive word for everything that Allah Azza wa Jal loves and is pleased with from the statements and from the actions that are outer and uh, inner or internal. So anything that is considered an act of ibadah, an act of worship, it is haram to turn that to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is haram to turn that to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, yani, seeing that we generally understand Tawheed and its categories, inshallah, to move on and re return back, ikhwan, to the kalam and the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions and describes and explains how the whole of the Qur'an is Tawheed. He mentions rahimahullah ta'ala that when we analyze the Qur'an, ikhwan, we see that the Qur'an is either ayat wherein Allah Azza wa Jal He mentions that which is related to the command to worship Him. Worship Allah. You have no God but He. Or the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal O mankind, i'budu rabbakum. O mankind, worship your Lord. Say in the mood there. Worship your Lord. You have no Lord uh, but He. Worship Allah, you have no Lord but He. Or those other verses or a hadith wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, Ya yeah, I need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Or those a hadith, Al Qudsi, where the Messenger informs us of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal concerning the establishment of ibadah. Or we see that the Quran has in it ayat, Ikhwan, that speak about Allah being Ghafur al Rahim. Azizun, Halimun, Hakim, Alim, Khabir, Raufun, Rahim, and so on, mentioning his names and his attributes. And in that, we have an explanation of the Tawheed as my Sifat. Or that we see that the Quran, Ikhwan, are verses that have in them the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related to the fact that He created the heavens and the earth. في ستة أيام ثم استوى على الأرش. He created the heavens and the earth in six days and then made istiwa upon the arsh. Or that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that يدبر الأمر. That He arranges the affairs within His creation. Or that Allah Azza wa Jal has angels that do the bidding of Allah. مدبرات أمرا والمدبرات أمرا. And by the angels that arrange the affairs within the creation. And so we see, إخوان, that Allah Azza wa Jal likewise he mentions that which is related to the giving of life, the taking of life. How Allah Azza wa Jal brings mankind back to life after, the, after they are dead. Resembling the manner in which He brings life to the earth, to the, the same manner in which Allah Azza wa Jal will give life to the dead after uh, yani they are in their graves and so on. Or that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about how He gives you risk. And that how it is He who sends you uh, rain from the skies and so on. And that it is he who brings forth vegetation for you and provides you risk, then that is the tawheed. Huh? That is tawheed. Rububiyah. Rububiyah. Oh, Ikhwan, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning that which is related to the fact that he destroyed a nation and that he rained upon them different types of adab. 